Hi, I'm Shannon from HouseImprovements.com and in my video today I want to show you how to grout this wall tile. In this case it's a shower wall. Uh, tiles are all installed and uh, basically I'm ready to go. I've actually grouted a good majority of this. I've just got the center area to do for the video. Um, just a couple, couple things to talk about. One thing that you're going to want to do is go around before you start grouting and uh, go to all your grout lines and check for any mortar that's squeezed through and uh, make sure that you can clean it with some sort of tool like this or whatever. And if it's, if it's, oops, if it's close to the uh, surface here, you don't want that because it might show through on your uh, grout. So you just take one of these tools, you go in your grout lines and basically uh, uh, sort of sand it down with this. So you just move along there and then go around and, and vacuum all your grout lines out so that you don't have any of that dust in there. And it's a good idea depending on uh, tile you have. If you have a mosaic you're going to need something pretty thin usually. Uh, this is uh, just a real cheap one but it always works real good on mosaics. You can get into these little little spots here and clean out any of those chunks that are in there. I think I pretty much got all this uh, earlier today when I did the rest. but uh, Okay, so that's one of the first things you want to do is just go through your, all your grout lines and uh, you know clean them out really well and give it a vacuum. I'll just get rid of that one before I forget about it. Okay, so that's kind of your first step. Uh, then as far as other things that you're going to need, um, if you can see down here, I've got, I've always got two small pails, each with their own sponge. And uh, one pail I use for all the first courses of cleaning. So it's always going to be pretty dirty and that sort of thing. And that last one is my clean bucket where I'll, I'll go back after and uh, give it kind of its final wipe to get rid of any residue that was left on the tiles. Uh, so I always keep them separate, so that's why I've got two different colors, so I don't get mixed up too. So I always have one that's always got really dirty water in it, and one that's as clean as can be. So And don't mix your sponges up either. As well as that, just to speed up the process, because I always do this by myself, I'll have a 5 gallon pail of clean water as well. And then I'll have another 5 gallon pail that I'm dumping the dirty water into, because it's important. This water is going to get dirty quite quickly. So you're always wanting to kind of replenish that, uh, otherwise you're just squeegeeing uh, uh, the mess around on the tile and you're not really cleaning. Okay, so you're, you're always uh, cleaning water. When I did the rest of this shower, which would have been three quarters of it, uh, I probably changed that water, I don't know, five or six times at least. So, uh, Okay, so you got two sponges, four buckets essentially. You don't need big buckets for these guys but just the bigger ones for your, your dirty water and your clean water. Um, you're going to need a, uh, a grout float. This one's well used. In fact, this morning I think I kind of broke this end. It is a little more flexible than it used to be. But you need a grout sponge of some kind, or a float I mean. And then you're going to need your grout. And uh, just first off, nobody sponsored us to do this video. Um, and you know if you've watched our channel a lot, we don't generally show name brands or anything like that. Um, but there's, there's times where there's products that I know and I really trust. And uh, I just want to say that this, this grout here is something I use all the time. I don't even look at any other, uh, any other kinds. Uh, you can buy grout in a bag and mix it with the water and blah, blah, blah. This is already mixed. Uh, you don't even have to stir it in the, in the bucket once you open it. It's all ready to go. Um, I've never had any failures with this. Uh, it doesn't need to be sealed after. It's stain resistant, mold resistant. It's perfect for showers. You, you wouldn't want to use it probably in a steam room or a pool or anything like that, but for sure anything like you know, tile or backsplash or whatever, that's absolutely a must. And it's got good, uh, it's got a little bit of flexibility too. What I find most times in a shower or, or anywhere when you have grout in a corner like this, an inside corner, most times over time that grout's going to crack because you get some different movement in the two different surfaces. I've never seen this stuff crack. Um, I just haven't. I've never had any callbacks on it. I've never had it crack on my own 
products in my home so uh, it does it just has that little bit of flexibility and it allows for some minor movement so anyways enough of that so it's a, it's a map a product flex color cq and uh, that's all i'm going to say like i said they didn't sponsor us or anything but this is completely what i use and would recommend using um, so on our wall we've got a couple different tiles so we've got the mosaic up top and then we've got the uh, 12 by 24s down here and uh, so I'm going to be able to, you know, kind of show you both styles of tile plus working around this metal edge. This isn't grouted here. I know on the video it's probably hard to tell what's grouted and what isn't. But um, So I'm going to kind of go through all of that and give you a good idea of, of uh, what you're up against. If I would have shown grouting this whole bathroom, it would have been just a long, boring video. And uh, uh, really I can show you all that same stuff right in this spot. So... So open your grout up. I usually take the lid right off. It's just easier to deal with. There'll be a piece of plastic for this brand in top, on the top. And when you're done with it, just flatten it back down and put that plastic in there as nice as you can to kind of seal the top up. And uh, this stuff will keep for more than a year if it's sealed down really well in case you have another project coming up. Uh, okay, so Basically, I, I'm pretty much ready to start. I don't think there's anything else I can really tell you. So I'm just going to use my my trowel. Oh, and of course I've got the tub protected. I don't know if you can actually see in the bottom of the tub, but there's a bunch of garbage like this, like grout that dropped down and it's in the tub, but there's a plastic film on the tub yet too. So, But I'm still being careful not to mash it into that because it might still scratch the tub. So as you can probably guess, Grouting on a wall is a little more difficult than grouting on the floor. You're, you're fighting gravity the whole time, so you're, you're definitely going to drop some stuff on the, on the edge. And uh, I kind of go around and I'll use some of that stuff, but uh, for the most part, if it gets contaminated with some dirt or dry chunks, I don't use it. So that's just part of the nature of the beast. You're going you're gonna to lose some. Okay, so you just go in your bucket. And I, I don't get too much on the wall at a time because like I said you're just you can't keep it up there if you get too big of a mount so you'll kind of um, find what works for you start out with a small area uh, the other thing with this grout is it starts to set up and dry and cure pretty quickly so you can't I never do a very big area like honestly I'll probably do like this is where the grout stops here and over here again I think what I'll do to start with is I'm just gonna do this border and maybe down here a little ways and that'll be it and then I'll wipe um, typically, if you're working with this kind of tile, like I might do about four or five, six square feet at a time. And once you get a feel for how much time you have, you can figure out, you know, how far to go before you start washing it down. Because it will start sticking, it just ends up being a lot of work to get it off. If you've got a really shiny tile, you'll get a bit of a uh, cloudy film on there too. And that's why it's important to have the clean water to keep that cleaned up. So. Okay, so uh, just get some on your trowel and depending where you're kind of working on the wall, just take it up to the wall and kind of work it in, work it into the joints. And you want to make sure you're forcing, forcing it in there, you're not just superficially covering the, the, the grout joint, not actually pushing it back in there, you know, a good eighth to a quarter inch. You want to fill that grout, that, uh, that line that's there. And just kind of work, keep working it along. And it's usually better if you can kind of work at a little bit of an angle so that your the edge of your trout doesn't fall right into every little groove and dish it out. So if you're working on a little bit of an angle, you can usually keep it floated pretty pretty level to the top. And you can see I'm dropping little bits and pieces. And I've got a bit of a large grout line right there. So it takes a little more. This grout here, uh, you can do up to half inch uh, joints with it. So I think... Uh, I think 16th inch to half inch actually, if I remember right. Basically I've got 8th inch joints for the main body of the tile here and these are just a little smaller in this mosaic. They're, some of them are close to 16th of an inch probably. So you can see I'm just pushing it in there and then I'm trying to clean off as much excess as I can as I go. If I, uh, if I was to leave it like that, I'm wasting a lot of grout, plus it's just going to take that much more work to clean it up. 
So I'm just methodically kind of working my way along here, making sure I get everything filled in and don't miss a spot. Periodically just look back at what you did because sometimes you'll trap a big bunch of air in there and you end up with a little bubble and it'll pop and then all of a sudden you have a void there that you didn't realize you'd left behind. So that again is why it's important to try to force it deep in there as far as you can get it right in there to fill it up. That's already trying to set up back there a little bit. It's not going to be too bad yet. So let's finish this off. Uh, some people, some people like to wear gloves, rubber gloves, when they're doing this. Uh, this can be a little bit corrosive when your hands are kind of in it and in the water and stuff all, you know, for three, four hours in a day. Um, so rubber gloves probably isn't a bad idea. Other than that, I don't really, there's no need for a mask or anything. I'm just looking back here, make sure I got all the, all the little areas filled and I just went down here a little bit. Okay, so I'll set that, that to the side and pull up my uh, cleaning bucket. So now with your sponge, you don't want to have much water in it. You're going to want to wring as much water out as you can. Get it pretty much as dry as you can. Like that, you know, it's not dripping or anything. It's just damp. And then you just, same as what you did with the, uh, the float, you're kind of wanting to work diagonally across the, across the um, grout lines, grout joints, so that you're not gouging them out. Just kind of get your, that wide one at the top is going to be a little harder to not gouge out. Right there, it was just stuck on already pretty good. So I'm just initially just trying to get the bulk of it off and kind of smoothing over the joints just to kind of feather it out and make it look reasonably well. Getting the bulk of it off the surface. Like that, I've got a piece of metal up there chrome trim that goes around the window so if you see me wiping up there I'm just trying to do that. So then just go back to your water and uh, rinse your sponge out as well as you can. Once you've basically wiped that wall once the water coming out of your sponge is going to be fairly white with uh, with the glue or the adhesive and you probably see the water's already already milky so it doesn't take long but you'll kind of know when you've got it too dirty, it's, you're not going to be cleaning very well. And uh, it's just time to change the water out. So this, this grout that I use, it kind of has a glue right in it. And that's why it's so effective. But that glue can dry pretty quickly and leave a bit of a film. So the, be the more you can get it off initially, the better. Oops. And sometimes when the grout gets a little wetter, uh, the color won't look quite right, but it'll, uh, it'll dry and it'll be fine. So another thing about this stuff is that you're not mixing different batches as you go, so it's always a nice color match wherever you start and stop once it's cured. Now glass, glass mosaic tiles like this, are a little finickier uh, when you're trying to get the glue off because it'll kind of haze over and it and it looks bad for a while. I, I think if you look up here on these ones, I think they look pretty shiny. I, I didn't wipe them yet, but uh, once that's dry, I'll just kind of go and buff those little tiles with a just a like a terry cloth or whatever. And if there's any little film left on there, it usually buffs right off. But the more you can get off at this stage, the less work you're going to have back then or at the at the end to clean that up. Okay, so that's that's where I'd kind of stop and I'd move on, grow up my next area. And in the meantime, that's kind of drying a little bit more because um, when you're initially wiping, sometimes it's easy to, to pull it out of those uh, joints there. So once it sets up, your next cleaning coats are, you can be a little more aggressive if you have to be. So I'll go down here and do this next area. And then we'll go back up top and I just go back and forth, back and forth, kind of work my way through the wall. So like I said, a, a shower, typical shower this, this size, uh, you're probably looking at around three hours. 
if you're by yourself to grow it at all and uh, you know get cleaned up and that maybe more if you've never done any of it before so same thing for these tiles you're just working it into the back into there and you can kind of see on your leading edge you're not going to see it with the camera but you can kind of see how far it's working its way in there so it gives you a bit of an idea how much you have to work it I gotta use the other end now that I broke that one end of the trowel it's not quite stiff enough so you're just kind of working it in there making sure you're getting as much of the excess off as you can and you usually end up with some on your trowel like that or on your float and you can just work it in there again I usually try to work from top to bottom now I've done a bit of the bottom here already so I'm going a little backwards in this area but if you work from top to bottom uh, then you're kind of cleaning up any little drips and stuff that rolled down the wall as you go so this is where that metal is against the tile I've got a, a grout joint there so just kind of whatever you can do to work it in there sometimes they take a little more finesse to uh, get it in there nicely just again just want to be sure you're getting it filled up so just kind of go at it whatever angle seems to peel it off the best off the trowel off the float I keep calling it a trowel how it fills it the best like so I got a little spot there Okay, and I, I'm going to wipe this up down here right away. So I think I think I got everything there. Um, what else can I tell you? When you're doing inside corners like that, like over here, usually what I try to do, I, I usually start on my end wall, and I'll go right top to bottom on an end wall, but. I, when I'm doing the end, I do the inside corners as well. Actually, maybe I can show you here better. Camera can see a little better. You can see here. Um, so if I'm doing this wall, I'm doing that corner, and I'm also doing out about the width of my trowel or whatever kind of works out onto this wall too. So that when I come back and do this wall, I'm not trying to rub up against what I've already done and making a mess. Because uh, those corners can be a little trickier to get it shoved right back in there and get it in there sometimes you're using your finger even to push it in there sometimes that works better than anything so it's no real uh, right or wrong to be honest if your finger works better in certain spots that's what I'd use just you don't want to use anything too rigid because you might end up scratching the tile or scratching the metal or anything like that so you can probably kind of hear the, the little sandy particles on there as I'm scrubbing. These ones are already drying on there pretty good. So you can hear it's kind of abrasive as I'm, as I'm scrubbing. And if you've got a spot like over here, you know, when you've worked around the corner and you're coming back into it, just take a little extra care where you're merging the two Two bits of work together and it'll just blend together and uh, nobody will ever be able to tell where you start and stopped metals kind of the same it, it like the shiny glass tiles it uh, it easily shows a film so you just got to kind of keep it clean it it will wipe off after two but it's easier if you can have it as clean as possible right from the start. Just cleaning up what kind of dropped off the wall into the niche there. On the niches, um, partly why I didn't show them is because they're kind of a pain in the butt. And by the time I get in there and looking in my arms in the way, you'd never see what I was doing anyways. But, you know, they're just a little more work, especially this one's down kind of low. Uh, so you need to get right down there and look and make sure you got all the little corners filled and again another spot where you might be using your finger in there to actually apply it and uh, just whatever it takes to kind of get it in there 
So you can usually, I don't know, can you hear that? Hear that, and then over here. It's a little more, there was just a few grains of the sand stuck to that tile there. And you can easily feel it with your hand afterwards. So just kind of go around, clean it all off. So now that's a couple, three times with my uh, dirty walk. Yeah, with my dirty water. Okay, now I've really got the excess grout all off the wall, so there's no real dirty excess spots. And this is where I'd go to my clean bucket, kind of for the final tune-up. Same thing, wring as much of the water out as you can. And uh, just go around, kind of give everything good white, rinse your sponge often. With this, with this pass, I rinse my sponge quite a bit, and I'll actually use both sides of it. So I'm, again, I'm going diagonally, and I'll kind of do a big area with one side, and I'll flip the sponge over, make the next pass beside that with the other side, rinse it off. Now, depending how dirty your wall is, you might be able to do that a couple times before you actually have to rinse your sponge out. This is actually pretty clean, so let's check this metal a little bit. There. Yeah, that should do it. So now you can see, see that's getting a little bit cloudy. Can you pick that up on the camera? There's some shiny spots and some cloudy spots. That minor little bit there will just buff off with a like with a terry cloth or a terry towel or whatever once once the grout's all dry give it a couple three four hours before you come back to it and that'll just polish right off of there so really that's that's the basics the real basics uh, this like i said this grout works really well it's quite user friendly as long as you don't get doing too big of a patch at one time so just start out with a small area and get a feel for it uh, get to know how long it's going to take and how much work it is to scrub it off if it gets dried on there too too long it it can take a bit of elbow grease so uh, once once the walls kind of dry you can you can look for spots that you missed usually just by feeling around you'll feel a real gritty spot or sandy spot and it, usually at this stage if you cleaned it this well those spots will just wipe off with your hand with a little bit of a scrub so okay well i think i think that's pretty much it all that's left to do here is let that dry and uh, I'll just polish that glass tile a little bit and that'll be all cleaned up. Uh, I believe this grout, I should really read it. Usually, usually I wouldn't have anybody use the shower for, you know, till the next day, 24 hours basically. Um, that, that'd be my recommendation, but just read what it says on the, on the can. And same thing if you're using it on the floor. Uh, so many hours before you should be walking on it too so okay so again hopefully you liked the video and hopefully it taught you uh, what you needed to know about grouting shower wall or grouting any kind of tile wall really and uh, if it did well, even if it didn't give us a thumbs up <laughs> I'd appreciate that and if you have any questions about your project that you might be working on you can come to the forum and post a, post your question on the forum if you have a comment about this video, post it in the comments. I uh, check those every few days. And uh, yeah, just appreciate you watching and checking us out. And look at our channel because we've got lots of good stuff there. Thanks.